The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. So this morning, one of the things that I wanted to preach about is oftentimes I get asked a certain question as a priest, whether it be from parents, godparents, grandparents, or even young people themselves. Father, how do I stay plugged in? How do I continue to grow in my relationship when I leave home, particularly for young people who are going to college? And you know, this is a question that I think is age old. And I think all of us who have went away to college, all of us who have lived our life, whether it be going to college, whether it be starting our new lives together as a family, um, marrying, whatever it may be, that question is a question that we have all asked ourselves. How do we continue to live out our faith? How do we continue to grow in that relationship with Jesus Christ? You see, our relationship with Jesus Christ can't just be reduced to simply going to Mass on Sunday. We cannot grow in relationship with Jesus if we just encounter him once a week. We have to supplement that encounter with prayer. We have to stay plugged in, whether it's getting involved in a particular group. Maybe for college students, it's going to the Catholic Student Association, uh, or maybe it's even getting involved. I know in a lot of the college campuses, there's the Focus uh, Ministry, Fellowship of Catholic University Students. And so I encourage you here today, I know this is not our college crowd, right? But I know that each and every one of you have a college student who you could think of, who might need that encouraging word from you. You know, our young people, we live in a world that is telling people anything but have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We live in a world that's saying, just do what makes, do what feels good. Do what makes you, makes you happy. It's not about anything else. But the reality is we have to stay Christ-centered in our relationship, y'all. We have to grow in our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And college can be a great moment for these young people to grow in faith. About uh, three years ago, as a transitional deacon, I was sent up to Hattiesburg uh, to Father Mark Ropel's parish. And it was a wonderful parish, you know, uh, at the University of Southern Mississippi. And I got to work with some wonderful college students who still come and talk to me frequently. And one of the things that stood out to me is that we would get up on Monday mornings at 6 a.m. and we would have a prayer walk for three miles. And we would walk with the college students and we would pray the rosary and we would pray the chapel of divine mercy. And we would talk with the college students after we were finished praying. And it was such a moment of accompaniment. It was a moment when it reminded me of scripture of being that Ananias that person who is walking with those in faith. And you know, it's no surprise that, um, that we, I saw the such fruits of that ministry and such growth in how the college students really responded to faith. And so I encourage you, and that brings the question today, how are we journeying with people in faith? Are we bold enough to take that opportunity to walk alongside someone in their faith. Maybe it might not be a college student. Maybe it might be a shut-in. 
Maybe it might be someone who has been ostracized from their family and has no one else to turn to. Maybe we can be that light of Jesus Christ, that light of Jesus, to walk with them in faith, to journey with them in faith, and to bring the light of Christ to them so that they can be the light of Christ to others. And so as we prepare to receive Jesus this morning, that's our challenge. Our challenge is we come here and we receive him, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. But the reality is that's not just it. We have a duty, we have an obligation to go forth and to be that light to this community, to this city, to our family, to our friends, even to the people we don't like. We have a duty. Miss Jackie, I see you laughing. We have a duty, even the people we don't like, we have a duty to share the good news of Jesus Christ with. And so as we receive him this morning, we pray, Lord Jesus, give us the courage through the gift, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we received at confirmation to go forth and to be that light of you, Jesus. We recognize in this Easter season, and we are so thankful for the great gift of your resurrection, Jesus. But give us the courage to go forth and to proclaim that, to go forth and to proclaim the good news that you have done in our lives, the good news that you are doing in our lives. Give us the grace to, to a walk, to accompany those in faith who may be lost, those who may be on the fringes of society, those who may not even know you, Lord. Lord, continue to draw each and every one of us, your sons, your daughters, ever closer to your heart. And we ask all of this in your most holy name, Jesus.